Det er her. Hej. Sorry. Apologies all, I had real trouble finding the link. <laughs> Hello. Okay. Uh, okay, we're already recording, cool. Okay, uh, we we'll, may as well get things started. Um, welcome everyone to the second uh, Observe Kate's working group meeting. Uh, thanks for taking the time to attend. Um, uh, let me see, Matt, do we have, can we use the same HackMD thing we did last week for notes or should we do something different? Um, I think I think we could, I, I had an idea to kind of, after every meeting, take the notes and, you know, clean them up and then commit them uh, to, to, to Git. Uh, and I found that HackMD really is a huge time saver if you're stuck doing that because you don't have to transpose everything to Markdown as you do it as a, as a public service. It's just, it's already in Markdown. Um, uh, so I would, I would say, sure, it would be my vote. Uh, uh, how do others feel? Um, sure. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't feel huge, huge, hugely uh, too precious about it if one way or the other. Um, Okay. Do we have any new faces? I think we do. Uh, or should we do a quick round of intros? So, uh, we, we yeah, that's, that's probably a good idea, around. Matt. Um, you yeah, you can stop. Uh, hi, my name is Matt. <laughs> <laughs> I will yield the floor. Okay, my name is Ken Finnegan. Uh, I work at Workday on observability and have been attending the CNCF tag observability for the last year or so. So I've uh, been trying to help out Matt with this effort. I'm Michael. I'm in the AWS Open Source Observability Service team and also contributing here. I'm Boris, working for KKR, working for observability field. Hi, I'm Eric. I'm, I'm actually from Intel, so I'm here to try to understand what this is, and I'm really here to represent the company to try to figure out with observability places where our company can help contribute, because we do have people all over the world working on various projects, and I'm, like I said, I'm just here to see, because I know that with, with a lot of our Intel stuff, there is opportunities for us to document how to use it. And this seemed like a good place for me to come and try to understand what it is and look for those opportunities. And I will go last. I'm Pavel Krupa. I'm from Timescale, also a maintainer for Prometheus Operator. 
and as well I'm curious what the group is about and how can I help. Welcome. That's awesome. Um, I, I, Eric, I, when, when you said um, some of the stuff that Intel has had, are you referring to things that I've played with over the last couple of decades, starting with like the Armulator and various development boards and, and, and JTAG probes and all the way up to more modern um, observability tooling? Uh, or yeah. are we making reference to something more specific or no i it's just like for example we have people in some of our geos that are that are doing work on open telemetry that i don't think is public yet but just to try to expose some of the you know stuff that's going on in our intel processors cool and i'm just like i said i'm trying to you know, we have this whole initiative. It's not just me, but there's a whole bunch of us that are attending all the various CNCFs where we're trying to have one representative there and then report back up to our management because there's there's a lot of random, Intel's a big company. And I honestly don't even know who's working on observability. I just know a few people. And it's really to try to connect all those different dots together so we know who's doing what and, and to bring this together sort of a consolidated up to our management so they can identif help identify as well. And that's why you see me attending these other meetings and I'm just sort of reporting at a very high level things that are being discussed. And, you know, we, Intel's always, well, at least the group I've been in, it's always been very, very open source focused and really trying to be a good steward of the community. And we want to keep that going and not lose that. I see. Well, that's wonderful. Uh, again, I think that those are all awesome reasons to but that's in a nutshell why, why, why I'm here as well. Um, I think that the mandate that the tag observability has that we created a few years ago is quite broad. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that we can do. Uh, what we've done as a tag so far has really been a function of, of how much, um, I don't want to say uh, person power, <laughs> you know, but, but you know, a, a, lot of the, a lot of the time has been spent more on awareness to date you know, a lot of these presentations about like, hey, did you know there's this project here? Here's how you can engage with it. Here's why it's relevant. Uh, but we haven't as a tag beyond doing some of the due diligence stuff in our first year, which was requisite and prescient and all of that, uh, you know, um, we haven't really done a whole lot be beyond a, a couple initial efforts. And I'm happy and proud of what we've been able to accomplish, but uh, I kind of saw this working group and, and, and creating it, which we're now in the process of literally doing initial task that, you know, break down to, to, to give some, give, give the community something that they can engage with if they want to bring resources to bear to this. You know, I want to give them a reason to do that. Uh, and so starting with, you know, a community curated clonable compendium of case studies, um, I think is a good first start. Uh, because it's got enough latitude that, that folks can can bring their creations and, and their ideas uh, without having to say no, but provide sort of a level playing field and a framework so that you can say, well, here's some workloads and we can observe them and understand them and interact with them um, uh, all these different ways. And we can kind of have, you know, um, a framework that facilitates that. So that was, I don't know, I don't know if I'm, is that kind of how you, you, you see it as well, Ken uh, and, and, and Michael? Uh, you know, we've been kind of talking about this for a while. And in my mind, yeah, this is like yeah. a rational, pragmatic first step. Um, but it's going to demand right. that once right. we get this framework in place that we do a little bit of um, selling, you know, to, to, to attract I guess, people. I guess the, the TLDR is last year we wrote a white paper. Um, you know, on a theoretical level, describing use cases and roles and whatnot. And with this working group, we're trying to build something tangible where you can actually see these, uh, or at least some of the use cases, how they look like, you know, taking some specific tooling, some opinionated choices, putting that together end to end to see, you know, how would that look like from an operator's perspective or a developer's perspective or whatever. Um, so the, the white paper we put together last year is a good blueprint, um, but you know, for for certain roles, not not so useful because they want to see something in action, right? They want to see something that they can go to and actually prod it and you know, trying it out themselves. 
And is the idea that you want to like take things like open telemetry and show people how to guides, this is how you would set it up and use it to observe or some of these other projects that you presented on? Is that is that the goal of this all observe, Kate? All of them, basically. Uh, the plan is to uh, certainly focus initially on CNCF related projects, uh, mm -hmm. and we will certainly consider those outside that that are still open source uh, over time as well. But the goal is to have all the necessary components to do the observing, Prometheus, Grafana, Loki, whatever we choose for that stack. Um, and then taking the workload examples we uh, have as options, uh, how do you go about instrumenting them? What can you instrument? Uh, okay. but all, and, and as part of that, as creating a way of how you go about doing that and providing the ability for anyone to take those examples, run them locally, We'll also have them essentially running in a cloud for people to play with so they can use an application and then see the traces or metrics or whatever that's generated from that application. Uh, and I would say also probably, it's probably not a goal goal, but kind of a side effect of what we're doing is that we will have the ability to find gaps in these with what we're doing as to where is observability lacking today? Is there a need for a project in this space because there's a piece of information here missing and all that kind of thing? That's at least yeah. my thought. Well, it, not only yours, I mean, that in terms of the, the role of technical advisory groups in general, um, uh, that, that identifying gaps in the ecosystem, uh, and, you know, calling out places where there isn't anything and there needs to be something, or, or it could be gaps in the CNCFs project portfolio where there are open source projects that fill gaps, but within the CNCF, those gaps are, are, are present, right? So, so that is one of the core reasons for tags to exist, at least in terms of the expectations from the TOC and, and, and the, the governance of the CNCF. So, so part of that aspect of what Ken just said of this working group and, and this thing that we want to launch that has a life beyond this working group, right? Um, uh, is is to in a in a concrete way that 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 is pragmatic again um, achieve some of those those goals um, and, and I think for me for me at least I see this also uh, as a multimodal way to engage with with practitioners right like some people the best way they're going to learn is to see a working example right out of the gate that they can clickety clickety and it's already set up and then they can you know read something in parallel. But but other people are going to learn best by being able to go get clone and like reproduce what they see that's hosted, you know, uh, by the CNCF on their own lab in their own laptop, whatever whatever local looks like for them. Uh, maybe maybe some people need to do it that way from the inside out, right? To see how it works, so that that's how they grok it, right? So I think having this kind of approach both um, can expand the community by having something that is accessible immediately, uh, but can but can also meet people where they are and how they best best learn uh, while encouraging contribution. So like once once this is up, like if, if someone had a new idea, like, hey, there's a new signal or I want to make a new take on a profiler or I want to do a debugger extension that does X, Y, Z because it helps and it's in this in scope. Like this would be a framework where they could like, you know, say, OK, I don't have to recreate all the workloads. I don't have to have you know, personally set up all the alternatives or the things that are complementary or adjacent to the thing I want to birth. But here in this framework, I can drop in a new thing and it can be one of N so that it can, it can, it can, it can be there with context. And I think it's also worth noting that we are kind of doing this to target two different persona groups. One being those who are operating observability systems. So for anyone who may not be as familiar, it's what are the pieces I need? How do they interoperate? How do I get them up and running? But then also the more developer side, which is, well, how do I send telemetry? What can, telemetry can I send? How do I instrument? Where do I do the instrumenting? So it's the double-edged uh, side of that is what we're trying to accomplish as well. Just to make it simple, there is a two groups, groups of uh, developers and a group of consumers. I'm a consumer. So I'm using an observability platform to do my business and I'm looking at the best solution in the market, which is a slightly less open source. 
and that we just discuss what as a consumer what task I would like to achieve and there are people who will just tell me yes it's a reasonable task and yes this is a way to do this or no this is something properly can we put on hold and at this point it's not so important for the community so it's a combination if you wish so I'm just curious because I just tried to do some research on uh, Intel and observability and so far I just found only one article <laughs> That was quite deep up to level of what you try to review, observe, if you wish, and it was low level <laughs> coding. So, what exactly are you looking for from Intel perspective? Is this something that would go through all infrastructure or application? Name it uh, business monitoring, or it's just low level monitoring on a, that's more specific just for application and uh, programmer people traceability logs monitoring what are you looking for eric okay i mean can you hear me uh, i'm yeah, trying i'm trying to push i'm trying to push your question as well um but well, what, what, what i gather is that you're a user in terms of um uh, you know, you, you have intern. I'm, I'm assuming you have in, you you have internal customers that are engineering teams that need it. So, so are you like a user in terms of um, you, you're you're providing a platform that other teams can can use, or do you yeah. mean that you're an engineering team or an engineer and you want to directly use for for yourself? And there's almost like two two variations on that. It's, that actually, it's always combination. Uh, I'm at, but in general, uh, I have my internal customers. I have application group, I have infrastructure group, I have business groups, and they have their own uh, goals. For example, give me this set of metrics or this set of blocks or this set of traceability entries, and they try to correlate and they try to be informed and notified about this. So I'm just the messenger between you and those people. So I just have to pick up the right platform to do this, that give me ability to not just specifically monitor some unique infrastructure or set of applications, but give me ability to, to, to be flexible enough. And uh, for example, Python or, sorry, not Python, Prometheus. Uh, I mean, so you can just go to open source and practically find any exporter for any platform that you want to monitor, just example. You're on mute, right, Henry? Yeah, sorry. Uh, hi, I was late. I'm sorry for that. Um, so I uh, to just to add, I, I agree that the, um, in terms of uh, even on the consumer side of the the, the of the, the the signals that are being sent and and to observe your environments, there are even different type of personas because there are people that are operating multi clusters and they are has clearly has objectives on, on, they don't want to go on the app side, they want to see uh, the cluster health and stuff like this and make sure that the everyone has access to the right tool sets and, 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 and data or, or, or isolates the data so every team can see the, only their own stuff. And then uh, you have the one more on the app side, people that are closer to the, the, the microservices or to the solution itself. Where they look just on their their side, and they usually don't care about the broader vision of their stuff. So I think, even on the consumer side, there are several type of consumers, uh, depending on your role, of course, in, in the organization. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, I'm sorry, sorry, please. No, I was just gonna say, yeah, that's very true. I, I would agree that uh, there's definitely many different consumers, and in addition to the ones. You mentioned there's probably also like uh, data analytics consumers that are looking to extract uh, meaning from various telemetry data and things like that. So yeah, there's a whole slew of different uh, personas that can consume this information. Uh, I just, uh, as I understand, but specifically in our case, I can correct me if I'm wrong, it's a, it's, a, it's a major goal is to see this uh, observability from Kubernetes point. So it's all about microservices, right? 
account is, is where well, this it's, it's not strictly function. microservices, but okay. it's certainly Kubernetes focused. Yes, Kubernetes uh, is Kubernetes focused. Yeah, I, I would say it's focused on cloud native, the, the observation of cloud native systems, and most of the projects, if not all, um, in, in the CNCF ecosystem, whether or not they're using microservices in their implementation or they're using serverless idioms or they're, they're, they're stateful monolithic traditional workloads yet being run kit and caboodle on top of Kubernetes, which isn't always the best way to do it, but is a way to that, that folks do it and every everything in between. I think that microservices versus not sort of an implementation detail, but but as many of them run on Kubernetes, um, you know, tooling that that, that is focused specifically on, on, on understanding Kubernetes workloads, you know, is a two for one in that all of the projects in the CNCF that run as workloads uh, kind of are observable in the same way, at least basically, uh, but Kubernetes itself as well, right? You know, it's, it's a little meta, but so, so we, so observe K8s, I think the focus is on Kubernetes. I said, I said, certainly, uh, but but really because that's that's sort of the the modern platform that we find in, in in this cloud native ecosystem right so so that's a best value for our time spent if you will um and and yeah. and it makes this usable to projects which it, which again back to the the reason for the tag and 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 its activities like this working group to exist is is to help this this ecosystem of projects vendors and users and all of those projects, if we make our tools able to observe Kubernetes and its workloads, they're potential consumers of it, right? Because it's it's meeting them where, where they are. It's, it, does that make sense? Um, in terms of what we wanted to accomplish today, I mean, I would be super happy if we could go through some of the issues that are a draft and many of them are one-liners and, and kind of have an outcome of, of two things. Uh, you know, one, um, you know, just vetting that these are the right ones. And if there are any big gaps, like adding in stuff, like there's not really wrong answers. Um, so it's sort of like a task generation and we've got a good start already. Uh, and then maybe uh, as a stretch goal, you know, uh, maybe, you know, having having some 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 sequencing about what, what can happen first and, and second. Alternatively, some of that sort of like project management, what should we do? what are we do it what are the buckets of things you know that's something that we could do asynchronously offline uh i'm kind of curious you know today more people have showed up for this so far than than ever before so so you know I, how would you all like to spend the time uh i, I personally uh, would like to kind of transition out of like like um not concrete things like i, I would like to be able to come out of this hour you know with some with some things that uh, are, are shovel ready, or at least generally agree yeah. that these are good yeah. things. We to definitely do. want to get we to that. Unlock some, not, some... This has been talked about for like uh, five, six months now. So yeah, we definitely want to get okay. to the yeah, uh, do, doing phase of things. Um, yeah. So, um, uh, and Brian Perry is going to show up. He has a concrete proposal. He's showing up, I think uh, at the half past, he showed me a doc last night that is a proposal for kind of uh, a frame, you know, ha, ha, one way to kind of implement some of these these goals around a framework for the workloads that is a little more generic and pluggable, right? So that, uh, yeah. But but what if, what if folks think of that, that high level goal again? These are early days, and we're, we're at that. Let's do stuff now. So let's define what it is that we think we should do. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. So do you want to share, Ken, or do you want me to share and you can talk or, you know, we could. Uh, I, I can share and um, we can go from there. So this is the current uh, project board that we have. Um, most of these are just draft issues that Matt threw together for us. Um, yeah, again, as a starting point, not as a, not as a end yeah. point. Um, these packaging ones, I can't remember what that, that was just like grabbing the, like observe K8's namespace, wasn't it? 
Yeah, like so. So there's a global namespace for also, you know, for pip, crew, npm. There's probably others that make sense to add there. Uh, you know, if we wanted to have, say, fast forward six months, right? You know, maybe we want to have a kubectl plugin from the observe k8s, you know, uh, group that that facilitates engaging with this, or or say there's some UI components that we want to package up um, that that you know do X Y Z, uh, you know. If, if we squatted on and just allocated some of these, some of these things, then, you know, it's kind of like if, if you're going to launch a company, you know, you grab the domain names first before the world kind of knows about it because there's going to be bots and other things that are going to go squat on, on some of those. Oh, okay. You just type. Okay. Yeah. It, so I'm new to this whole, uh, it's like the, the GitHub's new projects. It, it's a lot like Jira. Um, it gives you like this grid view. I believe, but then these are all draft issues, and then you know you can promote them to an actual issue, uh, and then they become just a, a GitHub issue that can be on a Kanban. Okay. Um, so, does anyone have any thoughts other uh, of other packaging um, or marketplaces we'd need to grab a namespace in other than npm pip crew and Maven? My thought, as I said last time. I highly am unsure if it's worth it to go through these issues in a, in a very, very deep level um, without having, have, you know, we, we don't have anything yet. That's why I suggested that we actually put something together and start out with something end to end, and even if it's just on the platform level because we're doing it again, right? We're going through all these very, very detailed things. Some of them are admin stuff, which is, you know, frankly, mainly on, on Matt. Um, and like, <laughs> I'd really love to spend time to actually build out that platform or that demo environment that we um, that we envision. Sure. Well, then why don't we, why don't, the, 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 that's- That's all in 18, right? Yeah, I was going to say like either 15, 16, 17, 18 or various aspects of that. Um, uh, right. Uh, th 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 this is a little bit generic too, but like maybe even before the core design, because that should kind of follow other things. And what, what's there is um, just a representative, like something like this. It doesn't have to be, be that. Um, I think number 15 was like, what's the core user experience? You know, like what happens when somebody comes to observe k8s.io? Like we could start there if you want. Oh, not that one. Um, it's uh, number like sixteen, I believe, and seventeen. Yeah. Okay. So, like, so like when you land at observe case .io, like what is it that you see? Like we could. How how would you like to start, Michael? Do you want to start with sort of like a user? I, I think I think it's even lower than that in terms of just it is. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but. Is it just kind of defining the issues to uh, what's needed to set up a Kube environment, what's needed to add Prometheus, what's needed to add Grafana, and that kind of thing? So the, the, the thinking that I have is, you know, there are a couple of folks here and, you know, time is, is really um, expensive. And I, I'm wondering what can we do as accurately really, you know, by keeping it up on, on Slack. If you're not yet on, on the Slack channel, there is a Slack channel dedicated to that working group. Um, and what do we really use this time for here? Yes, initially, this is the second time that we're meeting officially, publicly. We, we had you know, many uh, more, more smaller scope meetings beforehand. Um, but like, I would, hate to see that you know people come to that meeting and say like oh wow <laughs> there's just been a discussion for an hour and i don't know what what we're actually working on versus we can actually focus on stuff that we can ship as soon as possible and once we have something um we can you know talk about what how can we extend it etc cetera, etc cetera. Yeah. and the question really is what are the, the things that really require a synchronous you know, being present around here, everyone on the same way. That could be more on the creative side. That could be, you know, uh, making a decision or whatever. Um, but this kind of like, you know, going through um, things where it's kind of like unclear, like, you know, should we have an NPM package or whatever? It's like, 
Even I don't the, even know. Maybe in ten months' time, I have, I have an opinion on that, sure. right? Um, yeah. But so, so, the, so the answer, question, I would love to see this time uh, to, to, your, to your points be more of like an extended stand-up or a scrum, right? Where the result of asynchronous activities can be can be reported on if people are blocked. Like, you know, most of the work wouldn't be happening in this meeting. Um, Ryan Perry's about to join, and he showed me a doc that kind of gets to. I think yep. something right, concrete. Oh, did he just join? I'm yep. here. Hello. Sorry, I was uh, I was in another meeting. Yeah. Um. I'll just say lastly, I want to be careful though that in our initial stab, we don't we don't like be perceived as kingmakers. Like we've said, Grafana a few times. Now it's probably obvious that like a great easy first step is to use Grafana. Um. Uh, but you know. Um. I think as a segue, I think, Ryan, do you want to talk about or show the doc that you showed me and talk through it? Because I think that might address some of the concerns that we were talking about just before you joined around around getting to, you know, a bias for action and, and not. Sure. Um, yeah, I guess um, I'm. Oh, uh, I can share my screen. All right. Let me I don't know where the best place is to paste uh, this. Uh, drop it into the hack in the chat, in the chat, in the chat right here. No, right here. So I'm giving you a link there. So those are the meeting notes. You could put your Google Doc link in there if you like. Okay. Um, it's going to make me sign in. All right, whatever. I'll just uh, share and um, I'll put it in in a second. But uh, yeah, um, I, yeah. I, I guess yeah. I'm coming in blind, so I don't know the. Uh, what all was was discussed already but basically um yeah i don't know so so i i guess um was thinking that the a good goal of this was uh, and we've talked about this collectively before was to create you know a set of community owned projects that showcase you know all the different tools and principles and you know proof of concepts all that kind of stuff um, we talked about a bunch of the uh, existing projects that do similar things that are that are out there. Um, there's like Google Cloud, there's like the hipster shop, there's um, Jaeger, um, there's a bunch of like microservices things. Um, and I guess, uh, yeah, without, I guess, going through all this word for word, um, one of the reasons that this part of uh, what this group is working on was interesting to me is because um, so I've, uh, yeah, I guess for my day job work on Pyroscope, which is a open source continuous profiler. Um, and, um, yeah, I guess if you're not familiar with continuous profiling, definitely, um, a newer field out there, or, or I guess like a newer, or I guess, well, yeah, debatably newer, but something that's becoming, I guess, more popular as, as, as time goes on. And so, one of the things that we've done a lot to sort of show people, you know, how you can use Pyroscope and uh, how it works is we've actually integrated or tried to integrate actually with all of these individually. Um, some of them were easier to integrate with, some of them were not. But my point there being that I feel like there is a, um, that's kind of a good use case of like, as these new projects, you know, come up, I think that that's the type of thing that, it would be if there was just kind of like a base project where no matter if you're doing logs or metrics or traces or profiles or, um, you know, a service mesh or, you know, whatever it is that there's just like a really, uh, you know, kind of uh, a really solid project that you can sort of like add all of that stuff to that exhibits, you know, that has enough of uh, enough like meat to it where you can sort of like exhibit, you know, for example, having profiles that look interesting, having traces that look interesting, um, you know, enough logs, the ability to sort of, um, you know, adjust the like load that you're putting on it so that you can see like metrics, you know, going up and down, stuff like that. Um, and so I think like all of these projects do different parts of that um, well, but none of them were necessarily built for the purpose of um, being easy for other projects to like integrate with them. Um, and so I think, uh, I guess, yeah, to summarize sort of just like my thought and I'll, I'll send out this, um, this link here, I think it would be cool to, you know, maybe just even starting off is just coming up with like, a list of like, you know, 
some example application with like a list of like a number of different services. But the the goal being, you know, that you set up sort of just like a contract for each of those services. Like, let's say there's like, you know, 10 services for whatever example app we think of that you set up a contract for each of them, how they talk to each other. And then from there, you sort of like implement it in, you know, in Go and Python and Ruby and like whatever language you um, are in ideally multiple different languages. And then that way, at the end, you can sort of take all of those um, different services and you can, um, you know, yeah, you can make them so that they're easily, it's easy to integrate, you know, whatever thing that you want to integrate with them. So let's say it was logs. I know you said not to mention Grafana just now, but like, you know, let's say it's logs and you wanted to see what like low key looks like there versus, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Some other logging thing, or if it's traces, maybe you want to see like Jaeger versus, uh, you know, some other tracing solution or whatever, um, making these all easy to kind of like integrate those with, um, and kind of like at, by sort of like adding hooks where you can sort of like hook in different, you know, uh, I guess like providers for all these different services. Um, yeah, I kind of tried to go through that fast. I don't know if any of that made sense, but I guess the uh, the biggest thing that I that I feel like is kind of important there is just that like making a bunch of like components that are sort of like somewhat siloed, but that like follow a certain sort of like contract, have like a certain set of APIs that are accessible and you know, talk to different services in different ways. And then you can kind of, um, yeah, like build a project, around, start from there, build a project around that. And then from there, kind of figure out how you can get more community involvement of, you know, if you were to do it all in like, you know, Go initially, for example, then you like reach out to the Python community and you're like, hey, can you basically like port all of these things over to Python? And then the Ruby community, can you port all these things over to Ruby? And then basically no matter what language you're using or what service you're using, you'd be able to sort of like plug in different things um, and get multiple people from the community involved. So to op open telemetry does some of that. So, you know, yeah. would, 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 it, would it make sense to, to start with sort of OTEL to fit that um, polyglot language aspect of it and, and handle collection? Uh, or are you proposing that sort of like the OTEL collection uh, as well as, you know, distribution of signal data to various backends be one of, and right? I mean, OTEL is, is pretty standard, um, but it's also not a graduated project and it's not the only, it's not the right. only thing in the world, but uh, I'm trying to just understand in concrete terms, are you, are you suggesting kind of building something analogous to that or to jumpstart it with OTEL and focus on, you know, uh, uh, a framework or, or, or a contract around like what does an observed app look like? Yeah, okay. I think, yeah, I think that might be a better way to put it. Like, yeah, coming up with what does an observed app look like in terms of like, it can be, you know, yeah, like, you know, logs can be collected, you know, traces can be collected, metrics can be collected, I guess, like, I don't know, stuff like that. But I, yeah, I guess, to be honest, I don't necessarily know the answer to that I would propose it as, you know, a, a point of discussion. I mean, I do think that, you know, for the first version of like, whatever we were to do, it would be, you know, awesome for it to be, I guess, yeah, like, use i guess like reasonably accept i mean yeah sure like hotel is not the only option but i would say it is in this case probably a good place to start and Back you know <laughs> yeah you know and so like so obviously you know that makes a lot of sense and i mean i think same thing for like you know if you have this you know project existing you know obviously with it being in the cncf world it would make sense to try to uh incorporate as many cncf projects as we can without it being um you know overly i guess yeah as many as we can with it still making sense i guess and being able to see you know oh you know for this cncf project here's a good example of it integrated with like a real you know this like example application that hopefully 
people become more familiar with and start to, I guess, like think of as, you know, if you're, if you're, for example, a CNCF project that's graduating, you should be able to easily integrate with whatever application ends up getting built that you should be able to easily integrate with that, I guess, seems like a, a reasonable kind of like goal to have, in my opinion. I don't know just, yet, again, if any of that just, makes sense. Just uh, one question, because uh, here you're referring to like a building a, a demo environment. So we just helping here. Uh, so to, uh, maybe I'm full, completely wrong. Here, so I just need to have confirmation. I'm a bit lost here. Um, uh, so yeah, sorry, we, we I was not very structured in my. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah. I, I was, uh, a lot of questions was coming up on my mind. Um, uh, so we are looking to to have like an onboarding environment to showcase different observability framework to our, to our community. Is is that correct? Yep. Okay. Um, because since eight months, I've been doing every two weeks tutorials for all these various technologies, and I have the hipster shop fully instrumented with metrics. I mean, metrics I'm maintaining because it's changing quite uh, regular. I'm making logs with friendly, friend bit, friend operator. Uh, stanza and so if if we have something i already have lots of various examples you know and i made it a vendor agnostics to allow the end user to uh, oh, nice. plug whatever they want in the background so if we want to have something to showcase i i mean in my case i used the to shop because i thought it was showing different various language and, and that will showcase the usage of especially in open telemetry of the mm -hmm. various instrumentation libraries um so i think um, we could uh, take one of my repo uh, to start and then add more and more stuff inside of that because uh, at least that there will be a quick win uh, without spending more time to configure all those stuff uh, behind the scene. I mean, yeah, honestly, like that's, yeah, that's kind of what I, yeah, uh, was picturing in my head as well. Um, how many, I guess, uh, oh yeah, I guess it uses, that, that one uses like what, like, 10 languages maybe or it has a decent distribution of languages right yeah no gs python uh java dot net and uh and i think that's it yeah okay how easy is it to run locally um or i guess locally to be honest i never tried it because what i did i replaced they have internally in that cluster the Google has implemented a load meter to make traffic and generate logs and traces utilizing low cost but mm -hmm. K6 recently came up with uh, a, a, their support of Prometheus Remote Writer. So mm -hmm. K6, the load testing tool, is basically pushing the statistics to K6. So then you can also see the load and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. And it also generates the first uh, span. So basically K6 is the root span uh, for all the traces. So then mm -hmm. when you look at the, visually the, the traces generated, then you see K6 started with an HTTP endpoint. And then mm. you see all the traces. So I think um, that's why I, th I decided to remove Locust from the initial uh, uh, project of Google and replace it with um, the with K6 instead. Interesting. Yeah, which I mean, is that's ironically uh, again Grafana Labs, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's no, true. Yeah, so Talking about Grafana, Grafana. I wasn't suggesting that we not use Grafana. I just no, no, I, I, no, I don't no, want to no. like. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. like, you know, the tax code is the only thing that there is. No, that, that, that sounds sounds like a, a great thing. And, and I think we that make, might be the best option to go. I guess the only thing I'm advocating is that, um, as mentioned last time, that, you know, I, I'd rather build something now rather than, you know, weeks and months of planning or whatever. Um, and having a just the the Kubernetes core visibility, so really just the logs and the metrics and potentially the traces that come out of the API server, just what is there out of the box right away, so that we have everything set up end to end. And once we have that, essentially take what Henrik has there and you know put it on top of that, and then spin it off from there saying okay what can we do but the, the challenge that i see is if we start planning and you know doing all these things you know for weeks and months and 
we don't have anything to uh, show for. We don't so, have anything so I, where we can actually. I concur, and yeah. and and you you've been vocal about that, and, I, and again, I, I couldn't agree more. My 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 intent for making a bunch of draft issues is to just say like these are things I know will have to happen. Um, it doesn't have to be these first. We could pick something else. I, I wanted to give people something so they could grab and go. Okay, I'm going to just do this, right? Right, and to 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 your to your point. So so how how um. Does anyone have ideas about how we should best organize ourselves uh, uh, as well as um, be concrete around like what kind of resourcing do we have or could we bring other resourcing to bear to actually do some of this first? Because I, I don't want to just analysis paralysis either. Um, I'd like to to get rolling now that now that we're into Q2. Um, For me, but, we but, just need a, a repo, create distinct branches. Every bench will represent a, a set of uh, a framework combined, and the user will just select the right branch. And uh, for now, I just we just have readme files. So the onboarding, the user has to go through the readme files to deploy everything. But uh, if maybe there's a more smarter way to to the, to onboard everything. To, to clarify, the the idea was, and again, also up to discussion that we initially build out something that is online available, just like, you know, if you go to, I don't know, demo.prometheus.com or whatever the, the URL is, right, where you can actually, without setting anything up, the only thing you need is a browser, you go there, you can do something, right? Okay, um, and if someone wants to run it themselves, well, then we also obviously provide, you know, here is whatever Terraform and here's Helm charts, here's whatever, here are the instructions how to, you know, do it in, in your own environment. But focusing on you know we have something where we can just have one link to go go there and play around with that um and maintain that and by by doing that we also see you know what are the challenges right we we by building that essentially from from those components that we discussed um we can see you know what where where are things that are missing what are um you know potential gaps that we can address. But that was the basic idea to have these two kinds of deliverables, online experience, just go there without anything. And if you want to have it, you know, but rebuild it in your own environment here, here are the instructions or the, whatever is necessary automation. So we should probably have also um, um, just a, a quick note because uh, from, from previous uh, experience, um, we should also envision like a, um, uh, a backup process, something that cleans up the environments uh, on, on a regular day. Uh, uh, if you do it online, because I know that uh, there's always uh, people that has uh, always good uh, intentions, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and uh, so it makes sense that there's uh, like a process that that's um, yeah exactly. And that that was the motivation for actually putting it together rather than planning it for so long, because only when you put something together, you really notice like, okay, actually we need such a garbage collection that runs on a daily basis, or, oh, we need to maybe lock it down or whatever it is, whatever the inside is. Um, and we have a, a, you know, a relatively rapid win and it's probably easier if we go to, you know, uh, the tag itself or to others uh, rather than, and you've seen how long it has taken today to get all these experts on the same page in the sense of basic understanding of what was the idea of that. Now imagine you're a layperson out there and we're trying to explain to you what is this rather than, you know, here's a link, go there. Oh, I can see that. I can see the metrics. I can see the logs. Got it, right? Even if it's very, very, you know, simple and, and not so useful in the beginning. Okay, so do we need to agree on what are those like initial set of tools that we would deploy to Kubernetes to give us the logs metrics traces as a starting point? I think we did at least an initial list we have that somewhere already? last last time already. I'm just trying for whatever reason the heck MD doesn't work anymore for me. Okay. Uh, maybe oh, maybe. sorry, I deleted that one because Matt was doing stuff in the one from last week. Uh, okay. Let's oh see. yeah, I was gonna. Yeah, I was wondering what happened. That I, was, I was gonna post process right. later, like for today, just tack onto this one. But then I, I, I just right, right, right. Like, yeah, you know, right. Clean That's the one. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, what essentially what we had last time was um, what was it? Uh, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, the, it's a down next step. So the lining oh, yeah, is yeah. exactly down here, right? Um, um, yeah. So, so as we're as we're rapidly running out of time, is there anything that anybody wants to pick up and do? I can I can start and say uh, there's a draft thing to go contact the um, the CNCF's infrastructure lab and or the cloud credits program so we can have a place to run this. Um, uh, so so I can I can get that rolling in parallel. That that's not blocked by anything. Just to get you know a cluster probably in the infra lab and or in a couple different clouds if we, if the cloud credits program delivers. Um, I'm not sure the specifics. Uh, to just stage up and stand up a place where we can run whatever it is we want to run, um, uh, as well as I can start transferring the domain names uh, to the CNCF so that we can actually, you know, have DNS point to whatever it is we do stand up. Um, and I could probably okay, so do so we need this week. so we I don't think we have these specifically. So we need some issues in the repo for like. Um, what's required to stand up Prometheus, what's required to stand up Loki. Uh, so we need those couple of tasks. Uh, are there others that we need? So coming back to Henry questions, should we define all branches for GitHub? Uh, for uh, GitHub? I mean, so you already know exactly how you're going to structure this stuff? Well, for the environment, I, well, uh, we might have to refactor things. My initial thought to keep it simple is just do the all environment pieces and the, in the main repo. If we get to a point of saying, okay, you can use a Loki and Elasticsearch or something else, then we can split it out at that point to differentiate it in some way. Uh, I know yeah. it's very oh, easy so to get lost in multi branches yeah. and things like that. You just yeah. have the same uh, approach and use charts and under charts, you can split the time and so you can just. Yeah, yeah so makes, I think it might make sense to have one repo for the infrastructure and one repo for the workload, um, because then we can also kind of like do that in parallel. So whoever signs up for the, the infrastructure piece, which you know there are a few decisions like do do you know what what kind of Kubernetes distribution, what are we using, are we using Terraform or whatever, um, and then you know two or three people can focus on that and then two or three people can focus on the workload uh repo with you know seeding what what henrik has there yeah. and then going on from there and, and at some level i don't i don't i don't think it really actually matters so much if we say that you know vanilla kubernetes upstream like any any candidate any kit the kubernetes distro um and, and should, should be should be should be viable within reason uh you know so for example i would like to be able to use github actions with kind right so that people whatever it is that you know we're running for the for the site you know maybe it's on aws maybe it's in gcp maybe it's some kubeadm cluster out of the infra lab or something um it kind of doesn't matter uh, that way we can have ci cd look like local development look like somebody who in the future clones it and also look like production so so um yeah so i mean the infrastructure could the specific infrastructures, the specific implementations of that, that infrastructure actually, yeah, I agree, Michael, should, should be, Michael should, should be, should be cleaved out. You know, we might even in the future want to have it running in multiple places as an example of multi cluster you know, like, I think if we just keep Kubernetes though, as like the, 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 the lingua franca here, the, 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 the base interface, then, then we don't what, have to What do you anything. think when, yeah. When um, you going back to and when you think it's going to become a serial, I mean, so when we can go and start to work with this repository, how long it will take to do that, this initial repository? Well, we have repository already. Um, yeah, yeah, I can certainly use that as the base environment one potentially, yeah. create a separate one for the application. Uh, uh, we'll get up work so we can really do whatever we want. Yeah. We can later move it. Okay. Um, uh, one quick question I just thought of is I know we talked about Loki for logs last time, but as it, do we need to pick something that's more CNCF focused? I, I was going to to say that because if we put Prometheus 
in the cluster, and then we had low key. Uh, then, in terms of storage, that, that's going to be a nightmare to manage in the long term. Yeah. Um, I would, um, I don't know. I mean, we will have at least Prometheus for sure, but uh, in terms of uh, logging, I know that Loki could, could, yeah, eat uh, quite a lot of resources. Um, so it's just that we need to have a, a process that manage and maintain and, and make, uh, make sure that we don't going to have Can't you just set like the retention period so that it's just, you know, uh, keeping the logs for a day or whatever? I mean, I'm not too worried. Like we looked at the alternative, looking at Elasticsearch, but you know, in terms of <laughs> setting it up and everything, yeah, you know, it's like okay, okay, maybe Loki is easier. And and again, we don't, uh, and that's part of the beauty, right? Like we say, okay, we're using whatever Fluent Bit for shipping the logs. Okay, what is the story we moving from Loki to Elasticsearch, for example, right? Yeah. Uh, but I'm I'm not worried about that because we once we know what is the target target environment for the for the, the online demo so, so to speak uh, we have a pretty good idea like what is the yeah. you know what because is available in terms of research. I think Loki is one of n right like so if we do something like that logging operator or even if we just like you know like like we, we'd actually want to be able to have multiple different logging backends that, yeah. that, that can that's extendable right so i don't think we need to necessarily even choose now but to your point about loki taking storage only absolutely. one significant uh uh versus cons versus pros of all of here first regarding uh limitations s3 backend uh retention one day solve all problems so uh it's absolutely agree with now uh Loki by default gives the same uh, Prometheus format as a Prometheus. So later, when people start to the fact that the user would accept agree, so Prometheus format this is a standard format to, uh, to to review metrics. And actually, it's another big question. We have a list of metrics, uh, Prometheus metrics for Kubernetes. We have to describe every metric and clearly understand what in terms of Kubernetes means. So you will be capable by using the same format to do correlation between our local events and uh, metrics events. They are the same. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, but on the label side, it's the same, but I think it, it, I mean, we, it's not a big deal. I think there is a lot of uh, operator. I mean, you, and I was not aware of that logging operator. I was, uh, I was thinking of the uh, Fluent operator that they have maintained. Mm -hmm. um but um but i think yeah i mean we, we can uh, because the problem with uh, loki if you want to have the right labeling you need to use promptail and promptail okay. to design uh, uh, log stream pipeline is nightmare i'm sorry to, to interrupt you you can use fluent you can use fluent bit you can do uh, use promptail the the point is you put all your labels on your uh, uh side where you from where you're going to send this what from where you're going to send those uh, 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 log files? So the, the problem could be exist on cardinality side. So people sometimes can put multiple labels. This is another story. So, so, uh, so, uh, I, I so before, we get, before we get to, to, I was just going to uh, say, I think we're getting a little ahead of ourselves that yeah, uh, yeah. we need to get one logging option in there and then we can worry about right. more yeah. and then cover, right. as you said, the pros and cons and, uh, of each other. On yeah. the principle level, I think that discussion shows something, and that I, I would really recommend that we not trying to solve uh, yes. very technical, clear discussions on, on that level, because otherwise we have really like, you know, oh no, but I know this uh, operator, and oh no, there is this configuration bit that you forgot there. Um, uh -huh. I know it is a little bit Amazon biased, but what we always trying to do is we're trying to push the the actual technical decisions to to really the people who directly own something. So you know, if for example Henrik would own the application level stuff for for a certain workload for a certain program language then you know it's up to you and whoever pairs up with you to make the decision should we use that version or that version same is true for the infrastructure right the requirement is well in the first iteration the mvp should include at least prometheus metrics i want to have a link where i can see a prometheus endpoint and i want to have logs searchable go ahead do it right and then you know the people who are actually doing it can make the decision, okay, you know, we're using Fluent Bit here rather than Fluent D. We are starting out with, with Loki or whatever, um, and then you know, can report back saying like, okay, this is what we currently have. And then we can decide, you know, okay, can we now have also Elasticsearch or whatever, right? Or Medium I, last time about it. Right? I, do have, I do have one question to, to all of you uh, here. 
because when looking at the uh, CNCF ecosystem, we have established a solution for metrics, at least. We have established solution for tracing. We don't have established complete solution for logging or for profiling. Yeah, exactly. We have pa parts of that. So why do we want to go with metrics and logs when we don't have the technology for part of it? Why not go because, with metrics yeah, and tracing? We had that discussion around logs last time that is correct that's why it's so hard because metrics is kind of like yeah, it's a no-brainer of course it's prometheus right uh, because we don't have that in in cncf we need to find something outside of cncf but that's where people are right everyone is using logs almost or many people are using metrics not so many people are using traces so I want to be careful too, profiles, just because right? I, I do have to chime in just put point where like when we say prometheus uh, i kind of view that as the in cluster scraper and I don't want to say yeah. temporary storage, but like cluster local storage, uh, and yeah. that is ubiquitous. Like Borg and Borgmon came together, right? Um, but you know where metrics ultimately end up for durable long-term retention and/or analysis. I think that is a fan out, right? So just yeah. yeah. yeah but coming back to Paul's question in terms of logs, right? Why like, why logs, logs and traces? That's that's the reason, right? Because it's if we start out with something that the majority of our you know end users where we're using it um, cannot directly connect because that's not the thing that they know from their current environment. It's harder for us to, to, to kind of like sell the whole thing versus if we cover logs and metrics, that's kind of like what everyone is, is familiar with. That's where people are. And then we can add new or fancier stuff. So, so in, in, in the interest of moving forward then in, in sort of a modern way, um, I, what, if, what do folks think about having an operator be sort of the source of truth for configuration. Like, like I kind of think it would make sense to have an observed K, it's operator that sets up or provides a simpler- I, I got to drop. Yeah, it like, provides like the actual, the how. Uh, is that is that controversial to, to this group? Or, you know, I, the alternative is like descend into like a rat's nest of Helm or, you know, have a whole bunch of instructions with customize and this and that. Um, you know, versus sort of just taking that operator approach. I come from Red Hat working on the monitoring solution for that, where it was operators on top of operators. And we had this thing called cluster monitoring operator, which was installing then Prometheus operator. And after two years of managing that, it's a hell. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's complete, you mean the complete Prometheus hell. operators a hell or, or managing no, operators? No, the, the magic operator on top of that. Uh, because oh, we have... Yeah. Too, too many things that this, man, that, is, that this is actually managing. And when you go with multi-platform, it's going crazy. Uh, we have this yeah. problem in Cube Prometheus that we have just one yeah. operator there, but like 10 components overall. And it's well, already yeah. uh, hard even with JSON and, and not with Helm. Uh, so yeah. codifying that into the operator itself, like in Golang or whatever uh, language you would like to choose, it will be hard for uh, getting all those platforms and nitty gritty details, even if that's uh, only solely for Kubernetes as link of, link uh, of Franca. Franca. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm sorry. I don't mean an operator to wrap the backend data collection like the Prometheus, you know, Fluent if it's being used or, or whatever else. I, I meant like an operator example so that if someone wants to plug in one of their workloads that is to be observed, there's a well formed place for them to start because you know writing operators is actually kind of hard there's a there's some mental gymnastics but if we could provide like a clonable or a template repository that's like if you have a brand new microservices demo or if you want to do a k-native thing or if you want to show how you know if you want to make the tests you know something complicated that runs on kubernetes or something new rather um here's how like here here's how you get into the observe k8's ecosystem of observed demonstrator things right is is, is don't give us like a bunch of manifests that are going to have to be hand wrangled or or helm charts that are indecipherable but like give us an operator so it's very simple kind of like the prometheus operator wraps a lot of the complexity around setting up you know all of the various pieces of you know prometheus alert manager and on and on and on um, yeah, so I'm, I'm all right for that, for, for them. Yeah, that's that's kind of why Cube Prometheus was set up, uh, and it was set up in JSONet, which yep, no one I'm familiar with. Right. <laughs> that's, that's how I deployed, actually, our stuff is we use Cube Prometheus under the covers. Oh, great. 
I'm actually writing that. So. <laughs> well, I, I think uh, Jason it kind of like didn't get the attention it deserved and it didn't win with the masses, but that's, I think it is. That's a topic for a beer and, and that's a different time, topic. But, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But, uh, usually people use it with Helm and it turns into a dependency hell and with that. And if we want to go even with more uh, collection methods and like a larger demo uh, side for this, uh, it might get, might get crazy to have it under one roof, under one umbrella. We are actually yeah. at Timescale trying to do something like that, hence my uh, presence here. Um, but taking all that into one uh, one place might be a bit uh, complicated just saying that now well then maybe 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 we could use namespaces as like the bucket right like every app gets a namespace and maybe it's helm maybe it's this maybe it's an operator maybe it's something else uh but you know at least containing things into a namespace like we just need to have some way to reason on like there's a brand new workload that somebody made some microservices demo whatever it is um, how do they package your stuff so we can consume it into this environment? So, so maybe we just say everybody gets a namespace, do what you will, uh, and leave it at that. That's that's one of the things I was trying to say. Like with with when I tried to use at least for the Google microservices demo, and I was like, okay, cool. I just want to like you know add this thing to you know all the services. It was like a huge pain in the ass. I had to like you know, take the services, add the thing. Then I had to like push to Docker. Then I had to replace the Kubernetes, you know, replace the manifest file. And I had to do that for 10 distinct, you know, services. And then it was just like super complicated. And so that's kind of where, I don't know for, yeah, maybe, yeah, I, I, I'm curious, yeah, to get, get Henrik's perspective there, but it's like, you know, let's say we, you know, yeah, if you have, I'll just say logger, you know, A and logger B, like what's the fewest, you know, simplest way that you can take the exact same project and just like switch from logger A to logger B. And maybe that is operators, but I think that seems like a huge, uh, yeah, like a huge piece that has to be a part of like whatever project we choose that it has to be easy to like, you know, swap out from logger A to logger B or tracer A to tracer B or you know this is one of the reasons i like an operator a, a pro, approach to, to logging uh -huh. or other things is it is that you can you can just put a label on a workload and say you know in the logger logging operator case you know uh it's not you don't have to pick one you don't have to switch anything you can go to all the places right you can just say like mm -hmm. any logs that come out of here get sent to this system and for this one also elastic search and it, it doesn't it, it decouples things a little bit in that regard just to answer to your point, Ryan, uh, yeah, I had the same experience. <laughs> it was it was a very suffering period of my of my yeah. of my year uh, going to each individual <laughs> stuff. But uh, to on the logging side, what is good is uh, especially when you, if you take the fluent operator. Um, mm -hmm. Now it's deployed in a way where you can easily change the output, so we can make a generic output, and then you can just change. Uh, uh, the, the way the pipeline works is, is made on, on label selectors. So we can just edit and change one of the labels and boom. So we can have two different uh, destinations for our logs and mm -hmm. we just have to change the label and we enable the other one and the, the logs will be sent to another one. So that will simplify a lot on switching uh, lo uh, the log storage A or B uh, that, through using that type of approach uh, with existing operators. And yeah. in the open telemetry operator, similar things, uh, we can have generic uh, open telemetry collector and one that will be sort of the, the bridge to the backend that will store these traces. So we can easily have two version and switch and update easily um, the, uh, let's say the, the, the daemon set uh, deployment of the co collector mm -hmm. uh, to then uh, unplug solution A to solution B. So I think if you rely on existing operator or maintain, um, just switching product will be just few a, a very basic uh, script to create, and uh, uh, for us it won't be too much uh, complicated to do. I think. Yeah, that sounds. Yeah, that sounds awesome. I mean, yeah, I feel like that from my like perspective, that seems like a great starting point. Is like getting a project and like showing that things can be swapped in and out easily or setting, you know, or altering that project so that things can be swapped in and out easily. 
And then from there, you kind of just like iterate on it. it at least that's uh, the um, bottom line I was trying to get to maybe unsuccessfully in that like, you know, maybe there is a project that already exists that's easily alterable to get to that point. Or, you know, maybe, you know, maybe not. But that's that's kind of what I feel like is a good starting point there. Yeah, it's this has been great discussion. Uh, I know we're well over time now, so <clears throat> I, I'd suggest we probably need to um, table this to like Slack or uh, other racing channels so we can t continue it. But yeah, I, I definitely think, Ryan, your ideas are good. Um, I think there's room for all of them because some of them are more focused towards uh, if I have a greenfield situation, how do I do observability? Others are more a uh, brownfield of I have an app, how do I add observability into that? Or even what do I get for free if I do nothing with the app and I just have agents or whatever else might be. Uh, but yeah, certainly the first step in that is just having the infrastructure in place to see the metrics and logs and uh, then we can do the other pieces there. But yeah. yeah. I, really agree. Agree. I can leave us with a truth. Oh, sorry. No, I was just gonna say, I really appreciate everyone's time today and uh, views and thoughts. It's been uh, very interesting. Here, here's some food for thought, by the way. Um, one of the challenge, one of the goals we might end up with that I think would make sense to, to help with is how do people observe operators? Like that is the new <laughs> modular construction technique. And because it's eventually consistent, it's the reconciler pattern, not an idiomatic procedural, you know, one and done, even if it's that impotent, you know, because that's the, 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 the how this, how, how Kubernetes itself and operator manage things work. Uh, you know, it might take a bunch of iterations for that reconciler over time to get to success and the failures along the way that look like failures and along aren't failures. So, you know, as, as we build this up, some, some of it's going to include operators. I think there's like a sidebar, a side channel, like blog or series of uh, a, a thought around like, how do you actually know if an operator is working without having to just be an expert in all the things? Uh, and it's hard right now, right? So, so how to visualize that? Well, we've got lots of operators that spawn other operators, and with the Prometheus operator alone, like that's like you said, like it's like ten projects. So, just like understanding like what's working and what's not is a, is a is a huge hurdle. So, so it's all a meta, but I think we might like get a lot of cool outputs out of this. Um, at least that's what's in my cage right now. Yep. Okay. Cool. Thanks everyone for your time today. And um, same time next week, I won't be here the next two weeks because I'll be on uh, vacation, but um, the meetings will still be happening and uh, it would be good to see some progress and uh, maybe we can get some things done before then as well. So there's more interesting stuff to talk about and more problems to solve next time. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Thanks everyone. Have a great Thanks. one. Thank you.